let your word come in accordance to your will for the glory of God. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. 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 Beloved, we thank the Lord for his mercies and then what he's doing in our life. I believe the week has been a week where we are waiting before of the Lord. And I believe he has brought us to the third day. May the Lord give us the strength to continue. Amen. 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 One of our team for the fasting is faith without works is a dead faith. Amen. Amen. Another one also says that living and walking in the truth. We will talk about that probably on Friday. But today we are going to look at faith and works. When the Bible says, according to the Bible title there, he says that faith without works is a dead faith. Amen. Amen. This is very important. And I believe God wants us to understand that people can say they have faith. But that faith could be a faith that is dead. What does that mean? It simply means that I can claim that I'm a Christian. I can claim that I'm a spiritual Christian. I can claim that I'm a child of God and whatever I can call myself. I go to church, I fast, I do all the things. But if works is not part of my faith, Bible is just calling that faith death. And it means that if something is dead, there's no life in it. Amen. Amen. It's a serious matter. If somebody died physically, when we start reading, the Bible will tell us that a body without a spirit is dead. Somebody dead is dead, we have to go and bury the person. Now, the Bible is telling us that the faith we carry can, can die. How can it die? Because when works, what is works? In a nutshell, works are the deeds that people identify in you. The works you do will prove to people that you are a man of faith. Amen. Amen. It's not just words. Everybody can speak. It's like I'm preaching. I can preach very well. But there's something God also expects from the person who is preaching. My life must be an example. People need to see something in me and to say that, no, this man is a man of God. Or his faith is an active faith. So let's jump quickly before we read our main verse, which is James chapter 2. I am reading from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. I want to clear this so that we understand. The Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that is not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works. So Mark and this mentions faith here, mentions works here. Lest anyone should boast. I believe that we've mentioned this uh, Bible verse day in and day out. The Bible is telling us that the salvation we have received now, we did not receive it because of works. We did not receive it because of anything good. The works stand for we doing something good before God saw it and saved us. No. So when you read it again, it says that for by grace we have been saved. So our salvation is by the grace of God through faith. And it's not of ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. When you continue, he said it is a gift of God. So entering into the kingdom of God, it is a gift. No one can earn his entry into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because we are all contaminated. All of us have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says here that lest any man should boast, otherwise people begin to say that it is through my righteousness that I went to heaven. So we are going to break it down so we understand because this particular Bible verse confuses people a lot. Because when Bible says it's not by works, he is not condemning good works. He's just saying that it wasn't true works that we were saved. We were just saved by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. And then when we continue verse 10, that is where the point is saying, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. So now that we have become children of God, the old has gone and the new has come. So Bible says we are God's workmanship now. Created in Christ Jesus like Adam. Adam was a God's workmanship. He created him in his likeness. But now because we were dead before, now the Bible says that we have not been created anew. That is the born again child of God. And the Bible says that for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So mark this one as well. Remember when we were reading, he says that we were not, we, it, is not it is a gift of God, not of works. But now, after 
after we have been saved, the Bible is saying that God has created us. We are his workmanship. He has, he has given birth to us in a son. For what? Good works. So in other words, we say that we were saved for good works. We were not, we were not saved by our good works, but we were saved for good works. And this good works, even is not ours. The Bible says it is the Father who has prepared. That is the righteousness, beloved. Listen carefully. Bible says that our righteousness are like fit rag. I don't think any human being by his own merit can live a life that to please God. So here, Bible says it's a gift. And when we continue, he says that the Father, he says that for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So before you were saved, God has already prepared a way, which we call a good works, righteous way. So after we have been saved, now we have been enlisted in the army of God, we stand against the wiles of the enemy, we come to God's word, and God's word teaches us, do this, don't do that, and not that alone, his spirit is dwelling inside you. Amen. Amen. See all what God has done for us. Why? Because he doesn't want us to walk with people who have faith that is dead. He doesn't want us to see people who have been born again and still practicing the same old things. We are created in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And when we read the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 6, Bible says, Bible says, and he believed in the Lord and he accounted to him for righteousness. That is Abraham. So we're going to talk about a little bit. So we see Abraham believed God. And Bible says he accounted for righteousness. Why? Because God saw in Abraham that Abraham was willing to put his faith into practice. He's willing to obey. He's always willing to add words to his obedience. Amen. 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 So Hebrews 10, verse 23 to 24 also says that let us hold fast the, conf- the profession of our faith. The faith that we have now, Bible says we should do what? We should hold fast. That means you should be careful and guide your faith. Don't let your faith fall. And so he says that, he says, let go fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Meaning that we shouldn't become this unbelievable people or we have that spirit of unbelief in us. Remember that when the Israelites acted unbelief, God destroyed most of them. And sadly, many were not able to read the promised land. Why? Their faith were dead. They thought God cannot do it. And so even God's commandment was not something they want to obey. So Bible says, for he is faithful, he, he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. God said we should push ourselves into good works. Tell people, love your neighbor. Forgive your neighbor. Allow the spirit of God to guide you. You were once a condemned sinner. You were a vile sinner, a worse person. God was going to destroy you and myself. But by his own grace, beloved, the Father's love is so deep. And he has saved us. He allowed his son to be to tear apart so that we'll be saved. Amen. Amen. Now, when we want to define faith before we read James, according to the book of um, um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, last time we read, what is faith? So Hebrews 1, 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So hope and things you have not seen. Hallelujah. Amen. That makes you faith. Why today? Do you, have you ever seen Jesus Christ personally? No. Where did you see God? Why do you believe God exists? Why do you want to serve God? It's because of faith. You have faith that God is a faithful God and he exists. And listen to what the Bible is saying. He says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By, by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith, our forefathers, they trusted God. They never doubted God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is one of the most dangerous weapons of the enemy is doubt. Hallelujah. I say one of the most dangerous um, uh, uh, tools that the devil uses against the people of God is what? Doubt. Amen. Amen. When you read, when you read the book of Genesis 3, chapter chapter 2, verse 1, 
God gave his word to man. Like you are hearing God's word. Like you are a Christian. And the devil came to them to convince them. Now you see, beloved, sometimes God look at what you will do because he has given you everything. You know, this was a time and a moment of test. Listen to Genesis chapter 3, the third verse 1, to quickly we read. The Bible says that now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he, he said to the woman, Has God said, You shall not eat of any tree of the garden? That's the first question Satan asked. Because he had evil intention. Let us remember that he came to do traitors, kill, steal, and destroy. He's in to confuse people. He's in to make them doubt God. Because he has already doubted God and he has fallen. This is a sad news which the devil is still doing. And many people are compromising their faith. Listen. So the Bible says that he asked them. He asked them. He says that the God, he says that. Oh, sorry. Where am I? Two. Yeah, two. Okay. And he says, you shall not, the God says, you shall not eat of the of any tree of the garden, he asked them. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of that fruit from the trees of the garden, but from the fruit of the tree, of, of, from the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat. Amen. Amen. You will not eat of it, nor will you touch it, or else you will die. Then the serpent said to the Lord, Ted said to the woman, you surely, you surely will not die. For God knows that on the day that you eat of the fruit, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see what the devil did to our forefathers. God created a paradise for men. And the devil was kicked out of paradise. And because of that, he took offense so that he will lure man in back to sin, so man will fall. The woman did well. He quoted the word of God. He should have turned on faith and know that God who has promised is faithful. He has never lied to us. You see, because he wanted to deceive him. So he brought doubt. Did God really say you should eat? Did he say that? God knows that the day that you eat this food, you become like him, knowing good and evil. See, the devil was promoting men to a, a different level. He was telling men that where God has placed you, he has limited you. But if you eat this food, you become like God. You can create. You can do many things. And beloved, doubt is very dangerous. Many people couldn't reach, like you have said, the promise that because of doubt, of course, where? Today, the devil will come to you and say that, did they preach in a church that don't do this, don't do that? It doesn't matter what everybody's doing. About 90% of churches. Why is this church alone? And you will compromise. Whereas you know that the word of God says is wrong. It is not far away from us. The devil is still using the same strategy. And sadly, many faith are dying. Dear beloved, let us wake up. Let us wake up. See. See this sin that our mother and father committed. Look at our end. There is sickness. We die. There is there's no peace in this world. We are all, I mean, going through hardship. There's no joy and happiness here. Today we'll be happy, tomorrow something else. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Threatens. Has God said, you shall not eat of this tree of the garden? You surely will not die. You'll be like God. Three things. And man took it. Man took it. Oh, I can be like God. Oh, I'll be like this. Same way he went and offered Jesus Christ. Bow to me. And I will give you all this glory. He showed the, the, the Lord all the glory of the earth. Bow to me. Get it beloved. Are we bowing to Christ or bowing to the things that the devil is giving us? He is still testing our faith. Now let's be, let's leave the story. We'll come back to it. Let's jump to James chapter number two, verse number fourteen. We are reading all the way to twenty-six. Let's see if we'll be able to finish. So James two, verses number two, uh, fourteen. I read. 
What does it profit my brethren if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? So we have already established that the faith we have now must produce works. What works? The works the Father has set in advance for us to walk in. That is principles. His, his works. A child of God must be obedient to God's word day in and day out. Whenever you wake up, you know you have a covenant with a God who has loved you, protected you, and promised you that this is not your hope. He's coming to take you to the place in heaven. Beloved, this morning, even in our Bible our, our, our devotion, when we read about Psalms chapter 15, God was giving the qualities and the entry requirements. Who can enter heaven? He said, who may ascend the hill of the Lord, the holy hill, the tabernacle of the Lord. He who is upright, he who speak truth from his heart, he who does not abide with his mouth. You see, all these things are the things that faith man look at and allow the works of God to be produced in our life. When we allow this works, which is the Holy Spirit that helps us to produce it, beloved, we will not see all these evil things in our lives. So why we say that if you have faith and you claim to be a Christian, it has been many years, but there's no change. There's no any transformation. Attitude has not changed. Nothing is changing. Bible says, how would it profit us? Listen to what the Bible is saying. He said, can faith save you? Because on that day, according to Matthew 7, 21, beloved, the Lord says that he will tell some people, he says that it is not those who are calling me Lord, Lord. It is not just those who are professing they are Christians, they have faith. But those who does what the will of my Father. They will enter the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is no profit for laboring and spending our time in the house of God and calling ourselves Christians and then we are not allowing or working in the West. Allowing works to be part of our faith. Amen. Amen. So verse 15. If we are starting out. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, now he is bringing us to a place where we can also recognize the works, some of the works we need to do as children of God. Amen. 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 So we bring him as verse 2. He says that if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, if your brother is sick, is your brother, if your brother need a, 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 a help, need assistance, need certain kind of um, support from you, this is what he's asking. Let us listen. He says that, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warm and be filled, but do not give, do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? You come to me, I encourage you, oh dear sister, Oh dear sister Sarah, Mama Sarah, God bless you, be fine. You know that he's in need of something that you'll be able to help materially. But you can encourage him, that is good. You can give him all the words of the Bible and say that God is with you. Our God says he will never leave us or forsake us. Go in peace. I pray that and I declare that God will heal you and you bring him to that place. And then the person will leave. Maybe he's hungry. He just needs something to eat. Maybe he's his clothes are gone. Maybe he needs some strength, some, some, some support from you. Listen, beloved, act of being good. If we don't allow ourselves for God to help us to do good to one another, as the Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 25, 31 going, he said that day, he would tell many people that I was sick, I was hungry, I was going through so much trouble, but it turned out to be a gossip. Instead of you helping me, you rather speak things when I hear I get hurt. I was supposed to give you support. Jesus says, I was hungry. I was naked. I was in prison. I was sick, but I didn't receive report. So this is what James is pointing. If he said we are faithful, then somebody comes to you and you want something. If you have, it is your capacity to do it. Do it, don't turn away. These are some of the areas, beloved, every one of us struggle. Some of you can bother your life. There are some people, I don't know if you have some in your life. He is always asking, give me this, give me that, give me this, 
pray and ask the Lord. What is in your capacity? Do it. If it's not in your capacity, God knows it. So that's what James is saying, that let this be part of our faith. He says that if we do not, if the brother is destitute and he has come to us and he needed something, we don't give anything that he needs for the body, what does it profit? So when he continues, he says that, and if one of you says to them, depart in peace, or let's continue from 17, that's also faith by itself, it does not have works, it's dead. And the word dead is very, like I explained, very, very, very important. That means the Bible says some people's faith can be dead. They can claim they are all right, but because they are not in peace with their brothers and sisters, because they, they, I'm not saying, beloved, I'm not saying a you or I, but sometimes some of us wish that our enemies are dead, our enemies have fallen. Some people rejoice when somebody who, he, he, he did something good to the person and said the person repaying him with evil. He wish that the person, something happened to the person. Hallelujah. Amen. See, if I look at myself, the, the number of times I ask for forgiveness, and I want to look at someone who has offended me or doing something, and me, I am willing that that person should fall. I don't know who I am, and I don't know how God is going to look at me. Beloved, if you know that the way to heaven entails all these things, be ready for an accusation. Be ready to, for offense. Someone can intentionally step on your foot. Prepare yourself to show act of kindness. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we have been stepping on God's foot every day. God put us in this place. You see us going to the man again. We will come and call on him. He will cleanse us. Look at your child. If he's so stubborn, how do you feel? Continuously. This is how we should also be. Bible says that's faith, but it says it does not have words. It is there. But someone will say, I have faith. These two people, let's see about let's talk about these two people. Two people here. One say, I have faith. And one says that I also have works. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So let's see. Verse 17. Verse 18. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Hallelujah. Amen. I will show you my faith by my works. What does it mean? These are the two people who are in the church or who are in the house of God. They are Christians. One of them is really, really, I mean, I mean emphatically, or he's willing and consciously want to obey God. The other one thinks that I am saved by grace. I do not have to do anything. My righteousness is as filthy rag. God is not going to look at my righteousness. Jesus has done it all. He said it is finished. These are the two people. Hallelujah. Amen. And so that person has no any remorse, even that he has changed, he's a Christian, he feels that there's nothing to obey. He has forgotten the Bible says God has led a good works for his children to walk in. I'm telling you, beloved, there are teachings going out there today that people think that once they are saved, they don't need works. And when you call about works, they call legalism. It is not legalism. Trying to do good. No. The Bible urges every child of God to practice goodness, righteousness. It is not those who call me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into heaven. Psalm 15 says that those who are upright and practice righteousness, who does not abide with their mind, who speak the truth from their heart. Jesus said it is those who does the will of God who will enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Beloved, we shouldn't be deceived. God has purchased you with his blood. So every blessed day, say, Lord, increase my faith. Jesus told Peter, 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 the devil has wanted to sit you. But I pray so that you, when you stand, he said, I pray for you so that your faith will not fail. There's coming a time, beloved, I don't know your temptation. It could be so high that the devil come into your mind and tell you, are you sure? God, all these years you have been praying, what are you waiting for? The Bible is going to bring two characters here. Let's continue. The Bible says that those who say that you have faith and someone says, I have faith, I also have works. We just want somebody who have 
faith and works. There's nothing like works alone or faith alone. These two always are in connection. Amen. 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 And verse 19 says, you believe. Now let's hear it. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. What does that mean? The faith that is not producing works. The Christian who have decided that, you know, it doesn't matter what I do. The Christian who takes his time to obey God. The Christian who thinks that God is so merciful and gracious and is not going to turn him into hell because of that little gossip. Beloved, listen to what I will say. He says that demons believe and tremble. Once upon a time, a demon saw Jesus Christ and he began to yell, Son of God, Son of the Most High God, what am I to do with you? Have you come to torture me before the time? Why did the demon say Son of God? They believed there was God. They believed there's a Son of God. They were in heaven. They believed everything about the Bible, but there's one thing they can do. What is it? Works. Obedient to God's word. No demon can obey God's word. They can't. They have been damned for all eternity to be destroyed. Hallelujah. Amen. So demons have this type of faith. Why is the Bible bringing demons faith here? Because a Christian can prove that he has a faith, but his faith, his faith is like the demons. They still believe there is God. God is good. He is gracious. Yes, they believe it. Jesus died and rose again on the third day. Yes, they believe it. Yes, when you are born again, the Lord loves you for this. Yes, they believe it. But they cannot do the worst. Obedient to God's word. They have not. Amen. Amen. And the dangerous part is that Bible is comparing a Christian who doesn't apply works. Anybody who walks around and says, I'm saved by grace, it's not by works. Explain it well for people to understand. We were saved not by works, but we were saved for good works. God has prepared for us. Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to encourage you, beloved, tonight. Take your faith very strong. Amen. Because I can tell you that there's an enemy fighting us every day. This heavenly kingdom and the journey to heaven is not an easy one. Sometimes, you know, the five virgins fought drowsy. You know, the other five, even when they were wise, they were also drowsy, but they were prepared. They have works. They, they, they allow themselves for the Holy Spirit to help them to produce the fruit of the Spirit. So when the time came and the strongest sound, they woke up, they were prepared to enter. Those who didn't have, they were now going to look for a preacher to tell them the truth. They were deceived. Beloved, God's spirit is more than able to help us. Wherever you fall short, my encouragement to you tonight is that let obedience be the path. Because that day Jesus said that those who does the will of God, those who are entering into heaven, and he said, nothing impure. Like when we read, we read uh, uh, um, Psalm 15. Those people practice unrighteousness. I'm not going to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen, he says that, but do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without work is dead? Dead. See the word the Bible is using, foolish man. Why do you want to waste your time in the Lord? You have come to be a new creature and you still want to do the things you used to do. You are attracted by the things of this world. This shouldn't be your portion. This shouldn't be my portion. We have a new nature. We are Christ-like people. We are peculiar people. People God has set apart. Know that there's a different spirit that lives in you. Bible says, as for my servant Kevin, he has a different spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that dwells in that. Now let's look at our father Abraham. Was not Abraham our father justified for works by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? That is the question God is asking us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture said Abraham believed and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. These words were declared some 30 years back, even before he was asked to offer Isaac. I have believed God for all this while. But a time came that God tested Abraham. When does he receive? Because faith, as we just read, 
without faith, you can't even please God and you can't obey God. Because the person you claim to be a God, you don't trust him, you don't have faith in him, you cannot obey him. In fact, when it comes to obedience, you do it anyhow because you don't trust the person. Let's see Abraham, how much he trusted God. Bible says that he was, he often says that, was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he offered Isaac his son on the altar, verse 22, do you see that faith was working together with his works? Amen. Amen. James is very clear. Without it. It is very clear. When we preach like this, it's not because we want to say we are better than someone. No. The truth must always be preached. This is the true Bible where he says that, he says that, do you see that faith was working together with his works? In other words, not all what we are saying matters. Bible says that, do not be hearers alone to deceive yourself, but be the doers of the word. You love it? In my dream, as I told you the other, the other time, I saw that the judgment has come and God was judging and God was sitting down and the fire was blazing. And everybody was shivering. And then everybody has to pass through this fire. Imagine you have a stove in your kitchen. <laughs> and just a stove. Turn it on to the highest. It will give you about five seconds. Just go slow and put your hand on the fire and see what will happen. <laughs> Just five seconds. This one, you are going to the fire. The Bible tells us somewhere that our faith will be tested with fire. Child of God, the end is close. Hold fast to your faith. Don't let your labor be in vain. Don't get drowsy as the end of the time is closer. Very, very, very soon, God is going to recompense. He's going to reward you for all what you did for him. Lift up your eyes and say, Lord, give me the strength. Anytime I walk on the street evangelizing, I pray and thank my God. The Lord, give me that never dying spirit. Even when nobody wants to go, I want to be dead. Because I see myself as the least among them. I want, Lord, I'm not praying for popularity or any power. I want to submit. These are the words our father Abraham also expressed. Listen, Bible says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. As we read from Genesis 15, verse 6. And the Bible says, and he was called a friend of God. You see, See how God is moved. When I look at Joshua and Joshua prayed, when they were fighting and they prayed that, Lord, let the sun stand still so that we overcome our enemies. And God listened to Joshua. And the God stopped his own creation that day because of man's obedience. Any time you are prepared to move to obey your God, I always say he starts from the heart and the mind. Is this child of mine mindful of my way? Does he really care to obey me? So we're not doing things to please people outwardly, for people to see us. You can look at me in any form. You can think about your brother in any form. But if God sees the heart, because Saul saw David as a threat, as an enemy. Why? He wanted to eliminate him. But God sees David had pure. That is how we should be. Whoever is hating you, whatever the devil has leveled against your life, beloved, fix your eyes on God who judges the heart and the mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He will plead your cause. At the end, Saul lost it all. David became king. 40 years ruling upon the people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see that a man is justified by works and not faith only. We shouldn't go about and say, see, this is, we preach the truth, we preach holiness, we do this. Whilst me, myself, my life is not even comprising com or it's not, I mean, uh, uh, taking effect according to the way that we preach. We don't want to be liars and deceivers of our own selves. Beloved, works matters. And it's simply obedient to God's way. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my word. And if you obey my word, you sit on my throne, move with me as I have obeyed my father. 
Jesus learned obedience according to Hebrews 5, verse 8. He learned from all what he suffered. And the last one says, Likewise was not Rahab, the harlot was justified by works. Hallelujah. Amen. Rahab. When you read Joshua 2, verse 9, and listen to what Rahab said. He was a prostitute. Which when you and I see, oh, these people see the Pharisees when Jesus went closer to the prostitute and the tax collectors. They say, why do you go to sinners? When you read the scriptures, I ask myself, hey, so you are a sinner and you are calling somebody to a sinner. Why do you go to sinners? Because you are righteous. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, prostitute who have no share. He wasn't even an Israelite. Listen to what he said in Joshua 2 verse 9. He said, I know that the Lord has given you the land of promise. The Slam says, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. So the woman knew and heard about the God of Israel. Now listen. The Bible says that we, we finish. Likewise was not Rahab the harlot, harlot with the prostitute. Also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. Amen. Amen. She believed God, therefore she acted. She put her faith to work. And in conclusion, he, he had a way for them to escape. So see, when the walls of Jericho was coming down, <laughs> strangely and surprisingly, all the walls came down with the exception of Rahab's house, which was also attached to the walls of Jericho. It never came down. May the Lord reach his hand upon your life. Amen. Amen. May your walls stand still. Amen. And may you aspire day in and day out. Beloved, aspire. The Lord help me to do your will. The good works have mercy upon me. Because beloved, one day, it's just one day, we'll just hear the trumpet. And that day will be the final. Where God is going to pick his children away into the heavenly kingdom. So finally, the Bible says that. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Amen. Amen. Don't let your faith die. Whatever that it takes you, I was listening to one of our sisters in Adley of Fungsu, and he was saying, he was sharing a word and saying that the Bible says that anyone who loves the mother, father, sister, brother, child, husband, whoever more than me, doesn't deserve me, can't be my disciple. See how severe the Christian life is. God wants you to disown everyone, even your own body, to love him and obey him. So that is why the apostles knew all these things. When they get to the latter part, they all they offer their bodies. They die. Thomas died in India. They, they, they shot arrows. They killed some. They were willing to die for Christ. They knew what they were going to be. Love and be on your feet for just a minute. Father, we thank you tonight. Just in a short moment, just talk to God after this message. And say, Lord, I don't want to profess godliness with my mouth and deny the power thereof. Works, good works, you have set it down for me. Your child, your son Jesus Christ came and walked in them. He was obedient in all the house of God. I cannot call myself a child of God and a faithful child of God. And yet still complain and compromise my faith and living as a worthy person. Tonight we are all praying, Lord, have mercy. Strengthen us, Lord, to add words to our faith. May our faith be a living faith and not a dead faith. Father, we banish any work of the enemy against our lives. The one who is roaring like a lion, entering our families, our homes, day in and day out, as he entered the garden of Eden. He is entering every chambers of our life, trying to convince us to doubt your way. But we rebuke him tonight. That your children you will not put your word aside. Have mercy upon us. Any area now, if we have already compromised, forgive us, Lord. The time is so close, and the devil is seeking all to get lost. But tonight, we thank you for your word. That Lord we will not just call your name, we will not just say you are a loving God, but you are also a God of justice that will help us to be obedient to your word. As Abraham obeyed, as Abraham offered Isaac, he proved his faith. That he knew that you, God, were able to even bring the dead back. Therefore, he was willing to kill Isaac. May we be willing to go as far as our father Abraham. Forgive us our sins, my God. Take away any pridefulness. We pray that, Lord, according to the book of Psalm 15, 
Lord, those who are entering to heaven and the pure in heart, have mercy. Help us to live in peace with all men. Help us to do good to those who are in need. Those who are in need, may we not run away from them. Forgive us, my God. Strengthen our faith. Even those who even try to trouble us in always asking, give us patience, oh Lord, to help them tonight. 